Let's talk about Justin Fields and the Chicago Bears. This team came out at home, home opener against the Green Bay Packers, and they did not look good at all. They lose the game 38-20. to Now, it's not all on Justin Fields. It's not. I know everybody's going to look at the fumble that he lost and the interception that he threw and say that Justin Fields is not a true franchise quarterback. It's week one. This is going to take some time. There's a lot of things that went wrong in this game. They went into free agency. They picked up Nate Davis, a very good guard from Tennessee Titans, and they drafted tackle in the first round, Darnell Wright. I'm pretty sure y'all know what I'm about to go with this. This offensive line played pitiful and pathetic today. This offensive line was terrible. There is no way that Justin Fields should have gotten sacked four times. Now, if he was not able to have that athleticism that he has, and he was not able to run out of some of those situations, he probably would have got sacked eight to nine times. That is how bad the offensive line was today. It's not me trying to make excuses for Justin Fields. I'm about to get to what he could have did better later on. But this offensive line could not block today. Justin Fields was pressured a lot. He was uncomfortable. Did he make some bad decisions? Sure. But you can't make too many good decisions when you have a lot of pressure in your face. They cannot run the football besides Justin Fields because the other running backs in this team, they're good. Khalil Herbert, he's good. Deontay Foreman is good as well. The offensive line cannot open up rushing lanes for these guys, so it made it hard today for the Chicago Bears offense. Justin Fields on the day was 24 for 37, 216 passing yards, one touchdown, one interception. One interception came late in the game. They went for it on fourth down. They're trying to get something going. He looks at the wide receiver straight in the middle of the field. He's just staring at the wide receiver. And he's trying to just fit the ball into the tight window. Instead, it doesn't go his way. It goes for an interception. Not only does it go for an interception, it also goes for a pick six. Quay Walker finally got Justin Fields on that pass. He should have got him earlier in the game. He finally got him on this pass across the middle of the field. They couldn't tackle him in open space. He gets a pick six. It is going to be hard for this offense to work. This offense line cannot get things going. Another situation as well. When I look at the wide receivers on this team, you have Darnell Mooney, who caught a receiving touchdown today. Had four catches on the day, 53 receiving yards. Cole Commit, a tight end. A tight end. 44 receiving yards on the day, five receptions. Whose name is not up here? A guy that they went out and traded for. They traded the first overall pick to go get, to go get him an extra first round pick in the future. DJ Moore, only two targets, two catches on the day for 25 yards. That is where the game plan is broken. What happened in the preseason? When he caught that screen, they went for a 60-yard touchdown. It was none of that today. They didn't even try to get him going in the screen game. They didn't even try to get him going in the slant game. Instead, they were just saying, hey, you know what? Let's just flow with the offense like how it was last season. I'm not saying go out here and give DJ Moore 15 targets a game. You don't just want your offense to be solely based off of one person. I don't want people in the comment section to say, you're just saying based around one person. No. What I'm saying is at least get him going. This is a game-changing wide receiver. Darnell Mooney was on this team last season. There were some injuries. We know that he's good, but he's not a true number one wide receiver. Cole Commit was on this team last season, tight end position. If you're just going to result and just get the ball to the same weapons again, there was no point going out and trading for DJ Moore. Get him going and get him the football. Another thing that's going on with this team, they made a horrendous trade at the trade deadline to go get Chase Claypool. He did not have a single catch in this game. Chase Claypool is one of those wide receivers. All you hear about is potential, potential. He ain't showed nothing yet, even on the Pittsburgh Steelers. It is put up a shut up time for Chase Claypool. He has to come up big for this team. He wasn't even getting open today. He has to be better. Now I'm looking at another situation with this Bears team. Besides the offense, their defense could not get pressure on, on Jordan Love at all. They could not get any pressure at all on Jordan Love. He only got sacked once. So the defensive line and the pass rush in general, they definitely need work. The linebackers on this team are solid. I like TJ Edwards, and I really like Tremaine Edmonds as well. They both led the team in tackles today. TJ Edwards, number one. Tremaine Edmonds, number two. Those two are your free agent go-getters. Both of those guys are very good. So they earned their money today. But they're going to have to go out and play better defense on the back end. 
They're missing tackles in open field. They're letting the run game gash them at times. They're letting Aaron Jones take these screens to the house, take it for 50-plus yards at a time. You have to be able to make some moves in the secondary. You have to be able to go out there and cover guys. Kyler Gordon has to step up for this team. Same with Jalen Johnson. Yannick Akwe was the only person that recorded a sack on this team, and he was a late phrase signing pickup. Without him, you wouldn't even record a sack in this game. So they definitely have to go out and play better defense. Eddie Jackson looked fine today. He had a pass deflection. He played well, but these corners have to step up. There is no reason why Romeo Dobbs in one-on-one -on -one coverage should be mossing guys on the side. He's a very good wide receiver, but they had to play better defense, especially when you have a defensive head coach as Matt Eberflus. I knew it was going to be hard to go out there and get pass rush because Robert Quinn is no longer with this team. You trade him to the Dallas Cowboys, understanding that whole situation. But still, these guys have to step up. Now, to talk about what Justin Fields did wrong in this game. Staring down the middle of the field late in the game, throwing an interception, that's all on Justin Fields. I understand that your team's in a bad situation, but that's forcing a pass. That's not going to work. In another situation, he's trying to get out the jam, he fumbles a football, that's 50-50. When you go back and look at that play, the entire defensive line is in the backfield. Everyone blew their assignment. And he's just trying to make a play, and they wrap him up, and the ball just pops out. The offensive line has to play better. They have to get, get better pass rush up front, whether that's Matt Eberflus coming out and trying to design some blitzes or do whatever he needs to do. But the biggest things with these teams are pass rush, offensive line protection, and find a way to get DJ Moore the ball. It's not that hard. If the Carolina Panthers can do it, this team can do it as well. You cannot get a fair read on if Justin Fields is the franchise quarterback for you or not if the offensive line cannot protect and hold up for him. Darnell Wright gets a pass because he is a rookie and he will continue to learn and get better as the season progresses. But for the rest of the veterans on his offensive line, they have to be better. This is a quarterback last season that was tied being the most sacked quarterback with Russell Wilson. And it's not because he's holding on to the football for too long or he's running himself into sacks. He's trying to stay inside the pocket. The offensive line's not just buying him that time. But let me know in the comment section below how you feel about the Chicago Bears, how you feel about Justin Fields moving forward. If you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button. If you like the video, hit the like button. Most importantly, each and every last one, guys, stay safe, stay positive. Thanks for watching the video, guys. Peace.